Let's talk about some of the symptoms associated with deficiencies in tryptophan. So we, we've broken these up into kind of categories, if you will. Over here on the left, you can see earlier onset symptoms generally lead to irritability, poor sleep, and sugar cravings along with headaches. Um, so if this fits you, and this fits a lot of people, you might think, number one, am I getting enough protein in my diet? Because generally speaking, as I mentioned earlier, it's protein. Protein is where the bulk of this is gonna come from. It, and maybe you are, maybe, maybe the answer is yes, I'm getting enough protein. Then you start have to have to start asking the question, well, am I getting enough of those other nutrients that help tryptophan to produce melaton or melatonin? Because melatonin is playing the role in a lot of these symptoms. And so my, are you getting the B vitamins? Are you getting the zinc? Are you getting the magnesium and the C and the D and the iron? Right? All these become necessary to take tryptophan and make melatonin. So if you are getting enough protein, think micronutrients. Now, if we get a progressive deficiency, so this has been going on for a longer time, we're going to have the symptoms are going to take a step up. We're going to get depression, anxiety, impaired cognition. We know that uh, the tryptophan deficiencies um, play a role in how we we remember things in our long-term memory banks, intermittent skin rashes, and swelling of the tongue or glossitis can also occur. Now, if we get severe, we can get pellagra-like symptoms. Pellagra would be, if you're not familiar, I said earlier that tryptophan makes vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 deficiency is called pellagra. It's the name of the disease linked to vitamin B3 deficiency, but with tryptophan deficits, we can get pellagra-like symptoms. That includes what's oftentimes referred to as the three Ds of pellagra, dermatitis, three Ds, because they all start with the letter D, right? Dermatitis, diarrhea, and dementia, or cognitive decline. Now, if you're a child, and, I, and we've seen this clinically, children where parents are trying to take their kids on vegan diets, which is a horrible idea for kids, um, you get stunting or impaired growth and weight gain, blunting of growth hormone production. So if you've ever taken your child to the doctor, or maybe the endocrinologist, and they've said, your child's not making enough growth hormone, think tryptophan. Get the levels measured. Ask the doctor to measure tryptophan to make sure that that's not playing a role in a reduction of growth hormone. There are other amino acids that can do that as well, but tryptophan is a major one. Okay, let's talk about diseases linked to tryptophan deficiency. I mentioned before IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, and that has to do with serotonin and its regulatory effect of the gut, but also inflammatory bowel disease, and that has to do with that kind of urinine pathway that we were talking about that is, um, it regulates immune function and inflammation. Uh, and then two, we, have, we haven't really talked about it, but the bacteria in your gut, they can metabolize tryptophan. And they metabolize tryptophan into a variety of different compounds that have regulatory effects on the bowel from that inflammation. So your, your gut bacteria become very important. And this is where sometimes when we're seeing people who maybe they've been on an antibiotic or other um, gut depleting medications and it disrupts their microflora, it leads to potential reduction in the production of many of these compounds that are supposed to help regulate the bowel. Uh, we know some of these compounds prevent leaky gut because they play a role in the mucin or the mucus production of the GI tract lining. So it's important context there to understand that the inflammatory bowel component can have to do with the bacteria and the interaction between the bacteria and tryptophan. There's also something um, called immune crosstalk where um, the bacteria produce compounds that communicate with the GALT, the gastro-associated lymphoid tissue within the gut. 
Okay, we also have major depressive disorders. As we mentioned before, serotonin and mel melatonin can both play a role here in that pathway. Insomnia or lack of sleep, that has mainly to do with melatonin, as well as cardiovascular disease. Uh, that, that, that goes back to the inflammatory regulation and then the neurodegeneration that occurs uh, within the brain itself. So this image kind of helps us to understand the, the neurological degeneration pathway of, of tryptophan deficiency. So what we're looking at here, it's kind of a complicated diagram, but here's tryptophan. And I told you earlier, there's a pathway where, where tryptophan is, it goes, it goes and it makes a bunch of different metabolic byproducts. This is called the kynurinine pathway. That's that word right there. And so as a general rule of thumb, you see this red box, I'm gonna just draw a square around it. These different chemicals are byproducts of this pathway. And if we build up too much of these compounds, especially QA, and xanthorenic acid, then these compounds have neurotoxicity oxidative stress. They can create damage to nerve tissue. We don't want high levels of these compounds. Um, and so it's very important that when we're thinking about tryptophan, maybe some of you are already thinking about, should I be supplementing with tryptophan? If you're gonna do that, you, you see these little yellow circles throughout this pathway, those represent vitamin B6. You can see one over here, here, and here. So vitamin B6 is critical for many of the metabolic steps involved in breaking tryptophan down, the, where, where the ultimate goal is to make this substance right here, kynurinin, but also to make this right here, which is vitamin B3. If you don't have adequate B6, you can get trapped in some of these toxic compounds which have neurotoxicity effects. So it's very important to make sure that you're getting adequate B6. Now the wonderful thing about eating animal protein is it contains a lot of tryptophan, but it also contains a lot of vitamin B6. It's where we get most of our B6. Mother Nature puts it together on purpose. She knows that um, where you have one, you need the other for it to work properly. So the neurodegeneration of tryptophan deficiency largely tied into the byproducts of some of these chemicals produced by metabolizing tryptophan where you get stuck and you don't want to get stuck. Un getting unstuck requires vitamin B6 to a large extent. Um, so keep that in mind.